Hi Year 7, it's Miss Walsh here. Um, we're going to move on and we're going to start the next topic in the schema work which is coasts. So we'll start with lesson 1 where we're going to have a look at the coastal zone. Before we get started I just want to go through some instructions and expectations of the work that we expect you to complete whilst you're not in school. So the home learning that we expect you to complete. So as you can see on this slide there are just some instructions and expectations for you. So you can complete your work on lined paper or you can even complete it on Microsoft Word or some similar program on the computer. So it doesn't have to be handwritten. When your work is complete, so whenever I ask you to do a task or you, even if you decide to do something off your own back, you can submit it on Show My Homework. So this is just so we can check who is completing their work and making sure that you understand it and that you're getting what you are doing. Um, you can do this, you can attach it to show my homework by just taking a picture of your work and uploading it or you can attach a file if you've done it on the computer. I'll be setting regular quizzes on show my homework for you to complete the quiz. So the quizzes will be sort of a check of your of your knowledge and understanding from the work that I've set you to do and from the PowerPoint that you should be able to go through. Okay, so starting with lesson one on coast, like I said, we're gonna be having a look at the coastal zone. So the first thing to look at is to understand what the coastal zone is. So the coastal zone is simply just the strip of land next to the sea. It's the narrow stretch of land between the sea and the land. The sea and the land and the air is constantly changing its shape and form and therefore the coastal zone is constantly changing. In the United Kingdom we have approximately 17,820 kilometres of coastline and we'll be using some of the UK coastline to have a look at specific examples and to have a look at case studies. But there are many different types of coastal environment in the UK and there's some examples listed for you on the screen. So you've got cliffs and beaches, sand dunes, salt marshes, ports or harbours and also seaside resorts. You might be able to think of some examples of specific places relating to each of them different types of coastline. So for example, a local seaside resort to us that's on the coastal zone is Blackpool. Okay, so there are three key processes that are really important to the coast topic and they're what take place on the coastal zone and shape the coastal zone and continuously change the coastal zone. So the first one is erosion and it tells you the definition there. It's the wearing down or breaking away of rock. It occurs when the sea has a lot of energy and power from destructive waves and you'll learn what destructive waves is in the next lesson. But they're basically really powerful waves that can break down and wear away rock material from the coast. The second key process is transportation. This is the movement of eroded material, so that rock material that's been worn down and breaking away or broken off from the coastline and it's transported up and down the coast, along the coast. And then finally the last process is deposition. So this is when the sea loses energy and then it drops the sand, it drops the rock particles or whatever material it's been carrying and it deposits them when it's lost its energy. So going back to the first key process of erosion, there are four factors that affect the erosion of the coastline. The first factor is the rock type. So rocks erode, wear away, break down at different speeds and that depends on the, rocks on the rock type. So chalk and limestone form steep cliffs, they're called hard rocks, they're very resistant, they don't break down very easily. Whereas clays and softer rock form bays, they're eroded a lot quicker. That links in with the rock structure. So as you can see on the diagram you've got a discordant coastline. So this is where the rocks are at an angle to the edge of the coastline and they erode at different rates. So you've got a key there that shows you the chalk in yellow and the limestone in orange. They're the hard rocks. They don't wear away very easily. They create points and headlands. Whereas the sort of real light yellow colour um, is clay and sands. They're softer rock. They erode and wear away a lot more quickly. They don't require as much power from the waves, as much energy from the waves to break down. And they create what we call bays. 
The next uh, key factor affecting the rate of erosion on the coastline is the shape of the coastline. So headlands are exposed once the headland is created, so that hard rock is created. They're exposed a lot more to the destructive waves and more powerful waves, whereas bays become sheltered. So once the bays are formed, actually the erosion does become a lot slower compared to the headlands, which then are getting the full force of the destructive waves and they will begin to erode a bit more quickly. And then the final factor that affects the rate of erosion is the type of wave and the amount of energy the wave has that determines the rate of erosion. Okay, so the first task I want you to do is to learn these three definitions. These three definitions are key to the coast unit. We will be constantly referring to them throughout the lessons in the coast unit. And therefore you really need to know what they are. You need to understand them. You can go back to the previous slides, just rewind a little bit and go over them again, go over the more detail again, but you need to know them. So what I suggest you do is you write them out and then you can cover them up and try and remember them or maybe you could reword them to make sure that you understand them or you could ask someone to test you you could put them on some sort of revision card or make some sort of revision card where you have the keyword on one side then the definition on the other just something that you think will help you to learn and understand these three definitions and how they're different from each other Okay, so for an extension task, what I want you to do is a field sketch. So a field sketch is a drawing that geographers make. It's not a piece of art and I really don't expect it to be a piece of art. Um, but I do want you to describe the landscape that you're drawing in more detail. So I want you to think about a coastal location that you've been to or one that you would like to go to. You use the internet to help you. I've put some examples at the bottom of places that are quite local to Blackburn, such as Blackpool, South Portland, St Anne's or Formby. So you can have a look on the internet at their coastal zones and pick one that you want to sketch. Um, I want you to make sure you include descriptive labels, so I've bullet pointed them for you there. So you, the direction you're facing, so you can include a north arrow or a compass, just try and work out um, using maybe Google Maps to work out the direction that your sketch is facing. I want you to put the name of the location so you can give it a title. Then also any physical or human features. So physical features might be the beach, it might be some cliffs. And then human features, it could be that it's in a town or a city, um, there's a village near it, that there's just some sort of transportation network. Um, and then I also want you to use your imagination. So I want you to describe what you can see and hear, and then also what you might be able to smell, touch or taste. Please can you make sure that you draw in pencil and use a ruler for any straight lines and buildings. You can use um, different colours if you've got them, it doesn't matter if you don't know, just whatever you can. If you want a bit more of a challenge, you could try and think about how the location is used by the people, by the people who perhaps live there or visit there. So think about social uses, economic and environmental uses as well, as a bit of a challenge for you. And finally, once you've completed your work and your field sketch, please could you send a photo of it or an upload of it to show my homework. So just attach it to the homework that I've set on there just so we can check who's done it and also that you understand them that you've done it correctly. So that would be great if you could upload it on to show my homework. Thank you.